going to finish it, but we will not do the eight as homework. I'm going to briefly explain because that was removed from the AP exam this year, so I don't want to discuss information that's no longer needed on the AP exam. I know you guys aren't taking the AP exam, but still, I want to keep this material relevant. So your homework is the six and the sevens tonight. All right. Today, what we're going to talk about, is we're going to continue on with the stoichiometry, but we will bring back limonene reactants. And again, the last time that we talked about limonene reactants, which was a while ago, actually, I think it was right before spring break, we talked about the M&Ms and a cookie dough, and that when you run out of either the cookie dough or the M&Ms, you're done making cookies with M&Ms. Same thing here. If I say that my nitrogen is the limonene reactant, as soon as I run out of nitrogen, I'm done making ammonia, or NH3 in this case. No matter how much hydrogen I have, if I don't have any nitrogen, it's very difficult, actually impossible, to form any more of the product. So limiting reactants deal with finding out which thing is going to be exhausted or used up before the other thing. And there will only be one limiting reactant within a reaction. So today what I'm going to talk about is actually calculating and figuring out how you can determine that limiting reactant and then solving for the problem. Now the notes here go through the steps, but again, the examples do a really nice job of doing that. And one way that I show you how to determine the limiting reactant might is a lot different than what a lot of other chemistry teachers teach. But this is the way that the AP exam wants it. So it's, it's, I think it's personally, it's easier. I wasn't taught this way in high school, but it's really nice. So let's take a look at the first practice problem. And I can't remember what page that's on. 19, okay. So the question asks, it says, what volume will water vapor form? So in this case, we're still looking for things that we've been finding in the past. Um, when 40 liters of hydrogen completely reacts with 25 liters of oxygen, assume the temperature and pressure remain constant. Now, as a heads up, if the temperature and the pressure remain constant, what would be a good temperature and a good pressure for that to be at? At STP, very good. So if you're wanting to work smart, and it gives you the option that the temperature and the pressure remain the same, work at STP. Trust me, that'll speed things up. I am not gonna go through and show the PV equals NRT method on this because it'll take up a lot of space. So I will use this shortcut. But do realize that at STP, we can use the one mole equals 22.4 liters to our advantage. So let's go through the steps here. So step one, for any stoichiometry problem, what do you do? Write the balanced equation. So we have, let's see, hydrogen and oxygen. And this looks familiar to what a problem we worked yesterday. And let's go ahead and write what we know about it. Somebody's shining on me. Uh, we have 40 liters of hydrogen and we have 25 liters of oxygen. Now, initially you would look at that and go, oh, psh, the oxygen is the limiting reactant, right? But don't do that. Good. Don't do that. Okay, no matter how tempted you get, don't do that. It's bad. So, step one. What is step one? Write a balanced equation. Is that balanced? No. No. So, once we balance this, okay? So, we have our balanced equation. Same stuff that we've been doing. Now, here's the difference. This is called a limiting reactant step and I actually label it as such. We know we have to do what's called a limiting reactant step because we need to know which of these two values we're going to use to answer the question. In other words, you can't just say, oh yeah, I'm gonna use the 40 liters and find out how much water's produced. Well, if it is the limiting reactant, then you chose wisely. But if you chose the oxygen as your limiting reactant and it wasn't your limiting reactant, then you did not choose wisely. So we have to figure out which of these will be used up completely first. So what we'll do is we'll compare one another to each other. 
So it doesn't matter. Pick one. Do you want to look at hydrogen or start with the oxygen? It doesn't matter. Hydrogen? Okay. So we'll start with the hydrogen amount. And if you were upset because we didn't pick oxygen, get over it. You can do that on your own. It'll still work the same way. So we have 40 liters of hydrogen. And again, we'll go through the steps. So we're going to convert what's given into moles. Don't forget that since we're at STP, we can use the one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. And since this is hydrogen, let's label it as such. All right, so that right there is step two. We've changed what was given into moles. Now, with our mole ratio, what we want to do is we want to compare moles of hydrogen to the other reactant. So we're, we're going to stay right here. We're going to look at these two things. So I'm going to compare the moles of hydrogen to the moles of oxygen. Because I want to find out who's going to run out first, and then I'll talk you through it so you can figure it out as well. So what numbers or values go here? A one for the oxygen, a two for the hydrogen. Now, that's step three, the mole ratio. Step four is to get it back to the desired units. Now, this could be tricky. The desired units that we want to compare the oxygen to is what's given. So we want to go back to liters. So by going back to liters or whatever the unit that we have here, all right? So if I start with the hydrogen, maybe that's in grams. We would change that into grams, and this is in liters. We want to go to liters. We want to go to the desired unit so we can compare it rather easily. If I left it in moles, it's going to be hard for me to compare the moles of oxygen to the liters of oxygen. But if I go one more step and say, okay, well, let's find out how many liters that actually is, that'll help us to understand it a little better. So we can use the ratio. So one mole of oxygen at STP has what volume? 22.4. Isn't that cool? So here's a really neat thing. Yes, we still need to show all this work, but we also can realize that these 22.4s can cancel out. And really, we don't need a calculator for this, do we? Because 40 divided by 2 is what? 20. All right. So here, let's talk about this. And this is 20 of oxygen, sorry. All right. So here's how you find out who the limiting reactant is. You talk to yourself and you say, if I used all 40 liters of hydrogen, I'm going to need at least 20 liters of oxygen to completely react with all this hydrogen. How much oxygen do I have? Do I have more or less than what I need? I have more. I have 25, right? So what that means is I'm going to use all the hydrogen and I'm going to have leftovers of oxygen, right? Yeah. So who's my limiting reactant, or who am I going to run out of first? The hydrogen. Very good. So what that means is this is our limiting reactant. We don't care about that value there. Okay, so again, if I use all 40 liters, or if I use all my hydrogen, I'll need at least 20 liters of oxygen. I have 25. So I'm going to use all of this and only use 20 liters of the oxygen. So if I have 25, I'm going to have five left over. Very good. This one runs out. We're going to have leftovers. No, it's not bad. What it means is when all the hydrogen's gone, we're done making water. Because it's hard to make water when you don't have any hydrogen. Isn't that cool? That's very cool. All right, so now that we know who our limiting reactant is, now we can answer the question. So we can come down here and say, okay, well, I know that my hydrogen is the amount that's going to run out first. So I don't care about the amount for the oxygen. And don't do that because then you get a bad answer if you did use the oxygen. So I'm going to start again with my 40 liters of hydrogen. And I will go through the steps and say, okay, well, I need to convert the hydrogen into moles. And then I'm going to change my moles of hydrogen to moles of water, now that I know what I'm looking for. So I'm going to have moles of hydrogen down here and moles of water here. And what numbers go in front of those? Two. Two and two? Okay. Now, if we stopped right there, we would have moles. But what is our desired unit here? Liters. Very good. 
So really, all I have to do is go one more step, right? Do I even need to use PV equals NRT for this problem? No, isn't that cool? You're gonna like these type of problems. So one mole of water has a volume of 22.4 liters. And whatever that equals, well, let's do this. Those go away. You need a calculator for this one? No. Yay, 40. Now, I will say, if you wish to use PV equals NRT, or if you did use PV equals NRT on this type of problem, I hate to say it, but you have to use it four times. Okay? Without using this conversion. So it's nice to know the conversion and when to use it. All right. So at STP or most, actually all the limiting reactant problems that I will give you will be at STP. Okay? Especially for you guys. Now in AP we change that. We make it a whole lot more fun. All right? Because they're not all dealing with gases. So. All right, is there another practice problem? No. Okay. All right. So, let's see here. The sixes are part of your homework? All right, so really this next part of the notes after the sixes doesn't really, it's not different, okay? In other words, we're still working with limiting reactants, except now I might have a solid in there, or maybe I might have a liquid in there, but really, Limiting reactants or limiting reactants. We still go through the same process. You still go through the four steps of stoichiometry. So really, I, I don't know why it's such a big issue, but some people are like, well, what do you do if it's not a gas? You do what you've been doing. So let's look at the practice problem. Yeah. So let's see here. And it doesn't have a number, which is awesome. So the question asks, when potassium chlorate, KClO3, decomposes, and that's actually a solid, it says, how many grams of KClO3 are needed to produce 30 liters of oxygen measured at SCP? And then it says that KCl is also produced. So in this case, we're looking for how much of this solid, and we're actually looking for the grams, or the mass, so to speak. All right, and then we know that we have a volume Add STP, thank God. So what's step one here? Write a balanced equation, awesome. So KClO3 or potassium chlorate decomposes and it forms, what is it, oxygen and potassium chloride. And potassium chloride is also a solid. But we do have one gas in here, so that's why it's relevant for our gas topic. So we have our oxygen gas. And let's write down what we know or what's asked. So we know we're looking for grams here. And we know that we have 30 liters here. Well, this kind of stinks. Is this a limiting reactant problem? Is this a limiting reactant problem? I hear a no. Why is it a no? No, just because it stinks. Oh, well, yeah, okay, that's a good giveaway. But how are you going to know, looking and reading the problem, if you're going to need to do a limiting reactant step? Say it, Sage, what? Okay, go on. You're, you're close. What do we need more of? Not products. Things on the one side. What side? Left or right? On the left side, we need more reactants. So if we only have one reactant, who's the limiting reactant? That guy. Yeah. So unfortunately, this is not a limiting reactant problem. No. Well, yeah, okay. There's one thing. So, dang, this is a really bad problem. Sorry. We might have to work a homework problem out. So we can have some limiting reactants. But let's finish this one first. Daggone it. So, step one, oh. balance, very good, okay. So we have three oxygens, two oxygens, so we need a three there and a two there, which means we need a two there, right? Actually, this is a pretty boring question, now that I look at it. Ugh, I don't like it. It's very boring. So what do we do? We start with 
30 liters, what we know. Man, this is hot. I really don't like this question. All right, actually, let's. And you're going to see why I don't like this question. And then what do we do to that? Change what's given into uh, moles. Do you want to use PV equals NRT? Okay, good call. So one mole of oxygen has a volume of 22.4 liters. So that's step two. We've changed it. Step three, let's get rid of our moles of oxygen. And what do we want to go to? Moles of what? KCLO3. Good. Okay. So we're going to go to moles of KCLO3. And what numbers go in there? Two and a three. Two for the KCLO3 and a three for the oxygen. And then step four, go to the desired unit, which is what? Grams. So how do we do that? Very good. Do you see why I don't like this question? It's too easy. So 39.1 plus 35.45. And remember, that's chlorine. That's not a carbon and an iodine. That's chlorine. And well, we have three oxygens. And whatever that equals. Man, this stinks. Yeah, we need to do a homework problem. Yeah, yeah, no, we would not do all of them. I will do it if it's a limiting reactant, deal. It. So 109 grams ish. Yeah? All right. Well, let's take a look at the homework real quick here. Man, there better be a. So, what mass? Nope. How many moles of mercury to. What, what are all these decomposing things? How many liters of phosphor pen for formed? Oh, there we go. Okay, seven liters and nine. There we go. Okay. So, 7C in the homework, it asks, how many liters, and this will be actually pretty easy, I hate to say it, how many liters of phosphorus pentachloride, so we're looking for how many liters, or volume, are formed when seven liters of phosphorus trichloride reacts with nine liters of chlorine gas. All gases are equal temperature and pressure. Well, that's a neat way to say that. So these are all at STP. Good. So step one, what do we want to do? Write the balance equation. So who goes on the left? That guy, right? So it says how many are formed? So PCL5. And what's on the left? Phosphor. Man, this is a stinker too. And chlorine. So let's write down what we know. Phosphorus trichlor or phosphorus trichloride is seven liters, and the chlorine is nine liters. And the question wants to know how many. Ugh. This is this is no fun. All right, so, are we balanced? That's why I'm hating it already. Okay, so it's balanced as written. Pick one. The, boy. You, okay, just for kicks and giggles, let's pick the CL2. Because we know that that's the excess, right? How do you, how do you know that's the extra gas or the excess? Because they're all coefficients of one, right? So really, we're just doing this limiting reactant step to make ourselves feel good. Yeah. Or half, yeah. If it, if there's a two there, then what that means is for every one of these, I'm going to use two of those. Let's okay. So let's pretend that there's a two there. So for every one of these, I'm going to need two of those. So, and again, we're in our fantasy world for a moment. So who would be the limiting reactant if that were the case? Would this be the limiting reactant or the CL2? The CL2 would be. Because we need twice as much of this as we do that. And if we start with seven of these, how much of that would we actually be using? Half of it. Okay. So if it requires two of those, then we would... 
To a degree, yeah. Yeah. Just to get easy points. Duh. <laughs> All right. So we know, we know, and we're just doing this to get the easy points. We know that that's the lemming reactant. So let's just do it just to make sure that we feel good. I mean, it's a homework problem, so yeah. So we'll start with the, and this is our LR step. So nine liters of chlorine, and again, you're gonna love this. So one mole of Cl2, 22.4. Do the mole ratio, moles of chlorine to moles of PCl3. What are my numbers there? One and one, good. We know that because there's coefficients of one. And then we would get rid of the moles of PCL3 and go to 22.4 liters. Now, seriously, don't get your calculator out because the 22.4s cancel. So, what would your answer be in this one? Nine liters of PCL3. So, here's how you talk yourself through it. If I used all nine liters of chlorine, I would need at least nine liters of PCL3. How much do I have? Seven. So that means I don't have enough PCL3 to completely react with all the chlorine. So based on that, who's going to run out first? PCL3. So my limiting reactants, PLC, PLC. So you're saying before we even started it, you're like, oh, we know. I, what I try to do with every problem is after I balance it, I kind of do a real quick check to say, and again, sometimes it's not that easy because if it's in grams, that, that's really hard because then we got to go through more masses. But if we look at volumes, that should be fairly easy. So, I mean, it's, maybe I can make up another one here if you need some. Well, no, but I was just saying, like, how did you... How did I know? Because I know that if we have volumes for gases and we're at the same temperature and same pressure, they're going to behave in the same way. So I, I could look at that and say, okay, if the coefficients are equal here on the left side, whichever these values, as long as it's liters, and we're looking at gases at the same temperature and pressure, I know that this is going to run out first. Because it's smaller. It's smaller. And we essentially we have seven times whatever particles and we have nine times the number of particles. Uh, so the nice thing about gases happens to be that under the same conditions, if I had one mole of each gas, I had the same number of particles. But if I had say seven moles of this and nine moles of that, I had definitely have more particles for the nine moles. So gases are kind of neat. But if we had grams of these things, now we have to actually do a limiting reaction step. We can't just look at it. But with liters, it makes it a lot easier. So knowing that that's our limiting reactant step, we can, or our limiting reactant, that we know that we can use that to answer. But please, whatever you do, don't, on a test, see a question like this, because I'll probably give you one, because it's easy. Don't just look at it and go, I know that that's the limiting reactant because it has a smaller number of liters. And completely not show that. Because that would be almost like four points that you don't want to miss. And it's easy. You know it's going to be the limiting reactant. So just go ahead and show it. Because it's good practice, good habits to get into. We do a, quite a bit in AP Chem with limiting reactants. Yeah. Okay, so on that problem, you circled like the seven. Mm -hmm. You crossed out the nine. But on the, like, the practice problem, Oops. back here, yeah. And the, yeah, why is the smaller number hexed out when the bigger number circles? Because of the coefficient. So we have a two here. So what that means is for every one of these, I need two of those. So this is, that's a great question because if I use all 40 liters of the hydrogen, I only need 20 of the oxygen. So since these values are different, but I also have these coefficients, I knew right at the beginning that the only way that this was gonna be in excess if the oxygen was 25 liters is if the hydrogen were 50 liters and above. Because I would have to do, okay, well, whatever 40 divided by 2 is, that's how much I'm using. Okay, so you divide it by 2, and then the bigger, of, or whatever, like, who's up there, you divide it by 3, or whatever number is in front of that, and which, whichever number is bigger after you divide, that's the... Excess. 
That's the one I'm going to cross off. Yeah. So with the volumes, it's really nice and easy. Now again, if these were in grams, and I can make one up. I can make up a problem to where we have grams, and it's a little more interesting. Probably should do that here after we finish this one. Or you, you don't want more practice? Might show up on a test. I don't know. You think so? That's good. Okay. So finishing this off, then we would start with our limiting reactant, which is our seven liters of our PCL3. And then you just go through and you answer the question. And, and what should the answer be? Without even doing any work, how much PCL5 should we have? Seven. Very good. Okay. So that's knowing that, okay, these gases are under the same conditions. It's all one to one to one ratio. So you should be anticipating that value in your head when you finish. All right, so we have 22.4 liters, one mole. And if some of you are like, how in the world did they do that? Yeah, then make sure you work it out. Because again, the 22.4s will cancel out and we're all ones from that, or seven times all the ones at this point. All right, last thing. Oh, I'm sorry. So if you see a question like this on the test, don't blow it off. Do the limiting reactant step. And the only time you have to do limiting reactant steps is if you're given information about two or more reactants or things on the left side. All right, everybody good there? All right, the last thing I want to talk about is effusion and diffusion. Now, I do have in your notes calculations, but we don't need to do the calculations any longer. It's a concept. What effusion and diffusion deal with is like if I had, say, a bottle of cheap perfume, or actually since I have a teenager in junior high, a bottle of Axe or a can of Axe, it's disgusting. So after he takes a shower, I think he takes a second shower and acts. And so I'm in on the other side of the house and I can tell, oh, it's been about two minutes since he's taken a shower because the ax wafts its way through the house. That's what effusion and diffusion deal with. It's the movement of gas particles throughout an open space. So here's the easy part. The lighter the gas particle so, is. And think about it. It would be like, okay, me saying, I'm going to win the Boston Marathon. I'm a 200 plus individual. And whenever I run in events, there's what's called a Clydesdale division. That's this guy. All right. All right. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to win. I'll finish, but I'm not going to win. Why? Because bigger molecules don't move as fast as smaller molecules. Capiche? So that is what effusion and diffusion deal with. The smaller the particle, gas particle, and I'm talking mass-wise, not how big it is, but the smaller the mass, the faster it is. The bigger the mass, the slower it is. Now, here's an interesting question. Because I have a small gas particle moving at a very quick rate versus a slow, big molecule moving at a slower rate, do they, when they make an impact, is the pressure different at the same temperature? Um, no. And think about it. It's kind of like if you have some big thing hit you and some little thing hit you, but it's moving a little faster. The neat thing about gases is as long as the temperature is the same, the average pressure for all these particles is the same. Because, again, you've got, you got this big thing moving, but it makes a collision, and this small thing, and it's moving a lot faster. So the thing about effusion and diffusion is that all the gas particles at the same temperature have the same pressure. That's not going to change. But realize that the smaller ones have to be moving faster to make a harder impact. All right? So that's what all of this is dealing with. Now, I know it's probably going to break your heart that you don't get to, whoops, to use this equation here, um, the root mean square speed equation. It's a blast. 
But this year they took it out of the AP exam, so I'm taking it out of honors. Yeah, bro. I don't understand. But there's bigger people who are faster than the smaller people. There are, because they've trained to be. Now, are you talking falling? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, just like sprinting or something. Okay, well, to a degree, but when we talk about, there's a reason why, and I, again, I'm just going out into the general population. I'm not talking about those, those phenomenal athletes. Now, with me doing college football, there are some exceptionally big guys that move really quick. They weren't naturally bred that way. There's some training, there's some performance enhancing going on there. So, generally speaking, generally speaking, if you put a big guy against a small guy, and they've had equal amount of training, that small guy's gonna win. Just, just saying, just from my own experience. I've, I've run a lot of races. Have I won one? Never. It's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. So just realize that small particles, small particles move faster than bigger particles at the same temperature. All right, so the homework, six and seven.